the British Columbia port system, Western Canada's gateway to the world. A merging of skin and steel, where multiple moving parts work together with maximum efficiency. Over the next 12 minutes, we'll take a look at what it means to be a lasher, to be entrusted with the most physically demanding job on the dock. These men and women secure over 3 million containers every year for travel across the world's largest oceans. Uh, first day in the port like this, it was intimidating. And so it will be for everybody else, the new recruits. When they come to a place like this, you see all these gantries. Uh, when I do the training, I train the trainees on the ship. And one of the first things they say is like, wow, everything is so big, everything is moving around so fast. And, and just in size, they really get intimidated. As time goes on, you get used to it. You feel more comfortable with the job. And, and it's just like any, any other job. You know, just pay attention to what you're doing. It'll work out okay for you. Flashers, they work in tight places and around heavy equipment. Getting hurt is an ever-present danger. But the longshoremen are a family who've got each other's back. It's about showing each other. It's not leaving other people out to dry. You just, you take them by the hand and you show them what needs to be done and the proper way to do it. I like to, uh pass on all the experience to the new people and telling them the story of the senior people. New casuals, anybody that's never done it before, I'm glad to go up there and show you guys how to do it. When you arrive at Fort, head to the lunchroom for your daily briefing. It's called the Toolbox Talk. we lashing a deck today. We stay back from the crane. Don't be in there too early. Stay back to five cans. What groups are keeping an eye on the crane at all times. From the talk to the bunny bus, everyone gets a ride. Yeah, you heard me right. The bunny bus. You know, hop from one area to another. With the port having so many moving parts, the bunny bus is the easiest and safest way to move crews around. Everything on port is large. And when we say large, well, we mean jumbo with a big old capital J. Boarding the ship can be hazardous. The Savo netting must be set up and in place to prevent falling into the water. We also want to ensure the handrail pins are secure. There's a pin up top I want you to check. It might be safe now. Half hour later we come back, it may be unsafe. No running four at a time. The gangway has a weight limit, so no more than four people at a time. Space between workers ensures weight gets distributed evenly across the stairwell. Safety is vital, so always know where first aid is located. So one of the very first things you do when you come on the ship is you look for the first aid sign. It's right over here, and every ship is different. This one here, we have to go around the house, and it's on the other side, the first aid room. Okay guys, let's go check it out. June 19th up on the ship, uh, there was a turnbuckle underneath the can. So we had nine cans to lash. My partner was getting right beside me. We had one can left to do on the ship here, and we were going home. Every time you're going home, that's the worst time to be. You're in a rush. While well, never be in a rush, what happened was I leaned down like this, my partner went like that, and the bar came down, it smashed me in the head, and I got uh, 26 stitches right in the beaner. Knocked my hard hat flying off. First aid signage varies from ship to ship, so explore your vessel and identify your first aid locations. The Lasher's working environment is mostly metal, and in the battle between steel and flesh, well, flashies usually lose. So vigilance is our weapon of choice. Slips, trips, and falls are preventable injuries. Okay, when I'm on the walkway, I'm looking for hazards to catch my vest. We can slide possibly on these bars that are laying here. There's cracks and openings to trip into. Um, all sorts of things. It doesn't take much time just to adjust things around so you're not tripping and remove any hazards that you may see in your general working area. Even when your work area is kept clear, falls are still a significant hazard. That's why whenever climbing ladders or entering onto platforms, we must always ensure hatches are closed behind us. If you're the last person in the lineup, make sure the lid is closed. You wanna go home safe. 
You don't want to get injured or fall into this hole. We'll say it again because this one is really important. Close the hatches behind you. People and equipment seem to find their way through them when least expected. Open hatches put your partner, yourself, and those below you at risk. Heads up! You gotta be careful at any time those bars can pop out while you're unlashing and boom, they're gone. And uh, make sure no one's working underneath you. Okay, getting hurt is bad. So let's dive into what we've got to look out for. The metal you're working with is heavy. It's going to try and crush your fingers. Things like this. Don't drop them. Look up. There are things all around that can fall. Oh yeah. And whenever you're walking, beware of the crank. Don't walk underneath of it. That was cool. That sound means the gantry is moving along the dock. With ships always at sea, corroded and damaged handrails can become commonplace. It's important to stay alert when encountering these types of hazards. If you notice a hazard like a broken railing, report it to your foreman and don't work in the area. We all want to go home at the end of the day. Yeah, as I see here, there's a bunch of stuff uh, impeding my passage up, and we have to carefully make my way up and secure the railing for starters. The men and women who secure containers consist of six people, four lashers and two stackermen per crane. This is known as a gang. Let's take a look at what they do. Containers must be lashed to the deck while ships are at sea. When a ship arrives in port, the containers are unlocked and the lashing is removed. Now the cans can be lifted by crane. The crane lands the container on a bomb cart, which takes it to the yard. Containers are then loaded back on deck and lashed for the ship's next voyage. Let's begin on shore with the stackerman. This person's job is to apply and remove stackers, the devices which lock containers together while at sea. What I have here is a stacker. This device holds all of the containers in place on the ship. The self-locking stackers are spring-loaded. Turn the cone, insert it into the corner casting, and let go. Remove the stacker in the same way. The cans are stacked on ship. It's the stackers that are going to hold them all together. There are a few things you need to know about stacker. Firstly, the lines. Yellow's for you. White is for the trucks. Always face oncoming traffic. Always pay attention. And don't stand behind the stacker bin. If it gets hit, it's gonna go flying right into you. Oh, and if you lose something in the bin, don't climb in it, because you'll probably get yelled at. When a new ship arrives at port, the first crew of lashers must carry the unlocking poles onto the ship if they're not already there. If the poles are there, you're in luck. Grab a set and carry them to the bay your foreman has assigned you. Bay numbers are clearly marked on the side of every ship. Assembly of the unlocking poles is pretty straightforward. Insert one end into the other and align the holes until they click into place. There we go, and that's clicked in. Now I've got to add another section. My partner's going to go up in the meantime, and I will toss it up. The unlocking poles are used to unlock the stackers. This must happen before the crane can start offloading containers. As a rule of the lasher, you're always going to want to stay five cans away from where the crane is working. So look up. See where the can is landing? Count five cells, and that's where you're going to be working safely. Really don't like to see the lashers uh, right next to the containers when I'm uh, moving them, uh, especially not wearing their hard hats. Well, the stacker may fall off, and it has happened. It has hit one of our uh, lashers, and it was, uh, it was a close call. He's lucky to be alive. For safety, lashing crews always work in pairs. They begin by unlocking containers starting with the onshore side. 
Your partner should be loosening the turnbuckles, but never separate them until you're both ready. Careful here, this is a good place for the bar to slip out. Lashing is a lot of hard work, so proper technique and a steady pace is key. If you begin to feel fatigued, don't hesitate to switch it up with your partner. Different ships can have different lashing patterns, so when on a new ship, consult lashing charts to ensure you're doing it correctly. One pattern in particular includes the torpedo. Due to its weight, back strains, and hand injuries are commonplace. Hand placement is very important when you're handling these. You bring it out, they're very heavy. Most people think that they're light, or might think they're light, and then they get their hand under here, and they come down and it goes crush. And you will break your hand every time, right there. If being tall isn't your thing, there can be a temptation to climb onto the handrails when trying to place a bar into an out of reach cane. Get off of there, Steph. You're not supposed to be up there. Sorry, sorry. Yeah, that's not okay. If you or your partner can't reach, tell the foreman. All right, you made it through. So let's wrap this up. Container vessel work is one of the highest risk jobs on the waterfront. So follow these tips to ensure you and your coworkers get home to your families at the end of the day. Take pride in your job. Follow the tasks and keep workplaces tidy for others. Share the work, particularly if you become fatigued. Be someone your coworker can trust. Remain alert for hazards and changing conditions. Follow procedures at all times. When your job is done, check out through your foreman. And above all, be a courageous safety leader. You are the future of the waterfront.